a virtual welcome to the stage. Thank you so much, James, and thanks for partnering with Inmobi on this event. So I'm Sarah Camden. I am the head of product marketing for Inmobi's performance solutions in North America. And I've been at the company about a year now, but been in ad tech about 15 years. And I'm really excited to be joined by some great panelists and partners of ours today. Uh, so I'll hand it off to you next, Adrian. Hi, everyone. I'm Adrian Rice. I'm the director of media investment at MNC Saatchi Performance. Um, we're a performance agency that works with a lot of mobile brands from e-commerce to streaming entertainment to sports betting. Um, so we kind of run the gamut there. Yep. And, and maybe last year, Iran. Yeah, thank you. Yes. So I'm I'm Aaron Friedman. I'm the CTO and co-founder at Singular. Uh, Singular helps brands grow faster by uh, unifying all their marketing data sources and providing measurements uh, and marketing analytics uh, to understand what's performing uh, best for them. Um, so providing all the attribution solutions, working with the scale network, privacy sandbox, uh, media mix modeling, and all that kind of classic attribution methods to help companies grow. Um, mm -hmm. That's it for me. Okay, great. Thanks, Aran. Okay, um, so real quick, just to get us started, here's a look at the agenda of what we plan to cover today. Um, so I'll start by just kind of giving a refresher backgrounder on SCAN and a little bit about what's new in 4.0 that is the reason why we're here today. Uh, and then we'll shift over to a panel discussion. Uh, we'll talk about current state of SCAN4, uh, how advertisers can get a fast start with the new features that are available, and then kind of go into some predictions and, and, and uh, fortune telling for what's next and what's on our wish list. Okay, so before I, I get deep into the scan explaining piece of things, um, you know, James already mentioned this, but there's a poll that you can answer over to the right if you click on the little vertical bar graph icon. Uh, just get a sense of from the room of where people are at sort of on their scan adoption journey. And please don't be embarrassed if you're a beginner. It's actually quite common. Um, so, yeah. Looks like we've got about 50% saying they're intermediate, about 50% beginner. Let's see, I'll, I'll show the results for you all. And we can move on. Okay, so we've got a pretty good mixed crowd there, about 50-50 beginner, intermediate, and then a, a few in that kind of advanced geeking out bucket. Okay, so to set the table here is a little bit about how scan differs from other attribution methods. Uh, so number one, users are anonymized. You know, I think we're all familiar with app tracking transparency at this point, um, but it really makes us rely on privacy safe data signals when we're thinking about how we can optimize campaigns. Uh, number two is that Apple is the single source of truth for uh, attribution metrics. Um, you know, it's the only deterministic source of iOS performance when users are not opted in to share their identifier for advertisers. Uh, third is that performance insights are delayed. We've kind of lost access to that real-time feedback loop. Uh, so it requires you know, some AI and machine learning to, to address and bridge that gap. And then lastly, um, probabilistic attribution is technically prohibited in Apple's policies. Uh, so over-relying on that is, is a bit of a risky proposition. Uh, so that's why we see a lot of advertisers now uh, starting their scan journey so that they're not left on their heels when that Band-Aid gets ripped off. Okay, so just a little bit about the history of scan. You know, it kind of landed with a thud back in 2018 with version one, and I think pretty much universally was ignored at that point. But starting when Apple announced app tracking transparency back in 2020, uh, it began to, to get some features that gave us a little more glimmer of hope that this could be a usable solution at some point. Uh, and then that was quickly followed up when app tracking transparency actually rolled out with some additional enhancements that, that made it a more usable solution, including support for view through attribution, multi-touch attribution, where up to five uh, media partners could get assist credit for helping influence an install or a post-install event. And then also advertisers could opt in to actually get their own copy of a winning post back so that they could, you know, verify that that homework wasn't being grading in wasn't being graded inaccurately. And then what we're talking about today is Scan4, which got announced, you know, last summer in June of 2022. 
And then in October, it actually was released into the wild. And those of us on the line have been uh, working to unpack that ever since. So just a quick side-by-side -side comparison of what really improved with SCAN4. So number one, the earlier versions of SCAN uh, only had one postback that advertisers were eligible to receive. And this was controlled by a pesky dynamic timer that would reset for a 24 hour period each time a new conversion event occurred. And that can happen up to 63 times. So as you can imagine, <laughs> creates a pretty long delay for you know, your most valuable uh, customers, which is a bit of a, a tragic irony there. But now there's actually the potential to get up to three postbacks um, and they're, they're delivered during defined windows. So the first postback window is the first 48 hours post install. Uh, the second one is days three to seven. And then the third window is days eight to 35. So a much more predictable um, mechanism of getting insight into campaign performance. Uh, number two is, you know, there used to be no control over conversion windows, uh, but now there's actually the ability to lock a conversion window early so that a postback comes more quickly, which is certainly helpful to someone like in Mobi from a media partner perspective and being able to get those uh, campaign performance insights more quickly to inform uh, optimization. Uh, number three, the, the privacy threshold has changed. It used to be a binary sort of pass fail score, uh, but now there's a broader spectrum of different privacy scores. Um, they've renamed it as crowd anonymity. So there's four tiers now instead of just the two. Uh, and then next, there's an update to the campaign identifier, which is now named the source ID. And instead of just 100 uh, ID limit, there's up to 10,000 different values you can define uh, because it's changed from a four digit number uh, from a two digit number. And then next, the conversion value changed as well uh, to correspond with the new privacy tiers. There's been the addition of what's called a coarse conversion value which is a high, medium, low value that comes back either when um, the lower privacy threshold is met or in the second and third, the new postbacks that are eligible to be received. And then lastly, there's been the addition of support for Safari mobile web to app conversions, which opens up a whole new channel for driving mobile performance. Here's just a quick visualization of those new privacy tiers that I mentioned. On the left, you'll see that pass-fail binary privacy score, which you know, if you don't hit a certain number of installs per campaign ID per day, uh, the conversion value is withheld and it will just be a null. Um, and then also you don't get any insight into what specific publisher's app uh, was where the ad was shown that, that drove a conversion. And over at the right, you'll see the new four-tiered system. So the highest tier and the lowest tier are pretty similar to what we saw in earlier versions, but then you've got kind of this new spectrum in between where you get a little bit more info and a little bit more info uh, depending on how uh, Apple scores privacy. Here's just a look at that new conversion value schema. Uh, so at the top, you'll see this new coarse grain conversion value, which is that three values of high, medium, and low. Uh, and it's important to keep in mind that this is called a hierarchical conversion value for a reason. So the general guidance is that you take these fine grain conversion values, which this mirrors the 63 values that you could define in earlier versions of SCAN, and then map each of those up to one of these uh, high, medium, or low buckets. So that could be any combination of different conversion activities or even a sequence of events, you know, that really kind of define what a high, medium, or low value customer looks like for your specific app. Uh, one note I'll make too about the fine grain conversion value is that's only eligible to be received during the first postback with SCAN4, uh, whereas the second and third new postbacks will only receive the coarse grain conversion value. And then here's a look at the new hierarchical source ID or campaign identifier. On the left, you see an example of the two-digit value that was available in earlier versions of SCAN. And now on the right, you get up to four digits, which you get the extra two digits depending on the level of crowd anonymity that you achieve, with the higher two tiers uh, being eligible to receive those extra digits. And from a media partner perspective, this is really uh, useful to us from an optimization and, and testing standpoint. It gives us a lot more flavors that we can test and optimize against. 
And at the bottom, you'll just see a sample of some of those types of privacy safe signals that we tend to use uh, when we're targeting campaigns. So it could be based on traffic, like what type of device or connection type or temporal information like the time of day or the day of week or even where somebody's located. Um, opens up ability for more creative testing. So the creative theme or the ad slot or what format the ad is in. And then also looking at what supply uh, the ad is running on. So whether it be the ad network or exchange or a specific app or, or category of app, those are the typical things that we like to test. And then I think this is one of the things that, that people rejoiced about the most when Scan4 came out is the, uh, the removal of that pesky rolling timer that kept resetting for 24 hour periods up to 63 times. Uh, being replaced by those three fixed conversion windows of zero to two days, three to seven days, and then eight to 35 days, uh, plus the ability to lock each of those windows early. Uh, there is still a randomized delay that comes into play once the conversion window uh, closes. So for the first uh, conversion window, it's 24 to 48 hours post uh, the window closing is, is when you'll receive the post back. And then for the, the second and third postbacks, it's a one to six day long delay. So just to kind of recap what I covered, here's you know why I think that the enhancements that Scan4 brings are exciting. Uh, number one, the, the multiple postbacks with simplified delivery, you know, this gives a whole new level of insight into post install re-engagement. Uh, number two, the, the fixed windows and locking. Uh, this makes insights much more predictable and can facilitate time-based cohort analyses. Uh, hierarchical source IDs you know, gives us 100 times more opportunities to uncover learnings that improve optimization. And hierarchical conversions uh, give us performance insights a lot more rapidly, predictably, and frequently with those new um, windows. And then lastly, of course, mobile Safari support. You know, this covers basically 90% of uh, mobile browser traffic. So it's a great new additional privacy safe channel for reaching users on their iOS devices. Okay, so we'll shift gears here now and bring up our, our panel to dive into some of these things a little bit deeper. But before that, I've got another poll for you guys. I'm hoping you can help settle a debate here of is it scan or is it scan? realizing it's a little bit too late to, to shift gears during this presentation, but I'm, I'm very open to um, changing my mind about which one it is. So I would love to see uh, who's kind of in the acronym camp and who's more uh, in the abbreviation being the way to go. Got a few votes rolling in here. I don't know, what, what camp are you guys in, Iran and Adrian? Yeah. I'm firmly in the scan camp. Uh, for some reason, SCAD just does not sound nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree. I was always in the scan camp. Uh, you know, it's the right way to go. Acronyms for sure. And sounds much, much better. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you guys too. And it, it, it looks like the, uh, the crowd out there is agreeing as well. So we've got about 86% right now in camp scan. <laughs> okay, so let's jump into our discussion here. Um, you know, we've talked about, or at least I have about scan four changes, you know, being kind of an exciting uh, landmark in, in the progression of scan. So what do you guys think as far as scan four marking a turning point for Apple's attribution framework? Maybe I'll toss that over to you first, Adrian. Yeah, um, we've tested a lot with Scan, uh, Scan 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and we just haven't seen the same level of performance as we did with IDFAs. So it's been a real challenge to get like Scan campaigns um, scaling and really trusting the data that comes back from it. So I'm very hopeful that Scan 4.0 is going to be a big turning point and. There's two main reasons behind that. One is the optimization perspective. So when you have all those additional source IDs, there's a lot more insight you get into what actually is performing, what's not performing. And as you said, there's a lot more testing capabilities with creative or ad placement, um, a lot more insight you can glean so you can optimize the campaigns better. Um, and number two is the conversion measurement perspective. So getting those multiple post facts, um, getting um, the fine grain, but also the coarse grain conversion values, you just 
see a lot more insight into what the users are doing in your app, how they're converting, and ability to measure the lifetime value of those users a lot better. So uh, very helpful for Scan 4.0. Great, that's great to hear. Uh, maybe Iran, we'll, we'll toss it over to you to hear more from a technical standpoint. You know, what are your feelings on this? Uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's a really interesting question to kind of understand whether it's going to be a turning point or, or not. Uh, I think coming from uh, usually with the optimistic uh, hat, I think Scan4 is definitely a huge, huge upgrade, probably the biggest upgrade really that we've seen for SKI Network. Uh, with many features, mm -hmm. and I think it has tons of potential. So uh, obviously, we'll have to see how things evolve. But there's so many things that you can uh, uh, really work with. So I completely agree with Adrian. There's exciting updates like the uh, multiple post packs and the kind of measuring the lifetime value of the user. So you'd actually be able to see in your reporting, suddenly day seven or day thirty-five or even beyond, kind of the value of your campaign, mm -hmm. which was really, really a critical gap in uh, previous scan network versions. And the idea here to get deeper granularity, so suddenly you can actually see things at the sub campaign level, maybe potentially the creative level, right? Or any kind of additional dimensions that that works with support. I think that's massive, something that we're very much used to kind of in the IDFA world, and suddenly it's going to be available, so for sure. I think maybe on the other side, kind of, okay, so what's, what's going to be the challenging part? We still need to keep in mind that there's crowd anonymity tiers, there's still privacy thresholds, there's the random timers. So it's not like suddenly there's like a silver bullet and everything's going to be perfect. There's still a lot of challenges like trying to get that signal and interpreting it and like working with it for optimization. Uh, but no doubt that there, it's a major upgrade from what we have before and I think that's exciting. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely concur with with both of you on on all fronts. It's exciting. There's still room to improve, but definitely a step in the right direction. And I can certainly say, at least anecdotally, that I've noticed a momentum shift in the conversations with advertisers. That you know, many of them that you know were completely uh, avoidant of scan in the past are now all of a sudden like it's time to pull my head out of the sand. It's time to to really get a strategy in place and, and start testing and and moving spends over to scan throughout uh, 2023. So let's see, lost my slides here. There we go. Okay, so building on that, you know, what what sort of land landmarks of progress have we seen so far? And maybe we'll start with you there, Iran. Um, okay, so yeah, uh, what notable progress. So there's, if we try to like break it down for a second, to get scan four to work, you actually need like several things to kind of be in place. Um, so there's the media partners, the ad networks, of course, and the publishers who need to upgrade to scan for support. Then there's the MMPs like ourselves who need to provide the tools for the advertiser, kind of the infrastructure to manage scan for models and actually utilize the features available in scan for. Of course, the advertisers need to like start working with it actively. Um, and lastly, there's also the iOS users. Like Scan4, it's important to keep in mind, is only supported from iOS 16.1. Uh, so it takes time until users would actually like get that critical mass of like making sure that any of them or most of them can actually run Scan4 campaigns. Uh, so kind of with that kind of picture, I can share from the MMP side that uh, there's been a lot of work behind the scenes. And I think I can honestly say it's been the number one priority for us and really any MMPs in the industry to kind of uh, prepare for Scan4. So it started by releasing Scan4 SDKs. So now any advertiser can upgrade their SDK to kind of be available for Scan4 and be ready for these campaigns to start. Um, you know, we are actually enabled the Scan4 model. So suddenly, our customers can actually conf uh, configure those cost models and trying to kind of see what happens in the post back. And lastly, it's about the reporting side. So actually for any ad network who's been testing Scan4, uh, you know, InnoBee, for example, has been a great example for that. So being able to ingest those post backs and provide the reporting layer for the advertisers themselves. So it's really early to say that, you know, like that Scan4 is like working at scale. Definitely there's a bit time until like, everyone would be updated and ready for it. But we're already seeing live tests with Scan4, the first Scan4 campaigns for kind of seeing all the end-to-end -end flow. 
And yeah, people mm -hmm. can still can test it and see how the data looks like. Yeah, yeah, and to your point of you know the technical requirements that really have to happen before this could reach critical mass. You know, as a as a media partner, you know we've been heads down just like you guys, um, you know, working on building Scan Four into our our campaign workflows, and actually made an announcement earlier this week that you know our automated bidder for Scan is Scan Four compatible now. So you know we're certainly in the early days. Uh, from a publisher perspective, we're seeing about five percent of apps, you know, have made that upgrade to Scan 4. Um, but interestingly, I've also noticed a trend of, you know, a lot of uh, publishers moving from one of the Scan 2 versions up to Scan 3. So, you know, those that have maybe just been sitting on like Scan 2 or Scan 2.2, you know, that was 25% of our iOS inventory uh, late last year. And now it's down to 10% or on a version of Scan 2 uh, versus uh, version three has hopped up to about 60% from 40% at that same time. So some are kind of taking that intermediate step to, you know, get scan three compatible first before jumping to four. And then some are just going straight from two to four, which I found kind of interesting. Um, Adrian, from your perspective, you know, how are your conversations evolving as an agency? Yeah, so scan four was released in October of last year. So it's been about six months since then. And um, it, it does take a long time for the industry to adapt, like all, all these parties need to upgrade and all the inventory needs to reach a critical mass before it really makes a lot of sense for advertisers to start running like Scan4 campaigns at scale. Um, so we haven't done a ton of testing for Scan4, but there's been a lot of research that's come out about Scan4, a lot of really great resources about um, how the postback works, um, how the data is going to come in, like ways to set up your conversion values. So I think those, yeah, it's great to read up on all those resources, see examples of how different apps or app verticals might want to set up their conversion values. So if you're a gaming brand and you want to track revenue, there's different ways to kind of map that into the fine and core screen conversion values. So I think it's about kind of preparing for the time when Scan4 is going to be at scale, uh, upgrading your SDK, number one, um, working with your MMP to set up your conversion values for Scan4, just doing um, all your research and all your education now so that once we are ready to test Scan4, you're really like going to hit the ground running. Yep. All great points there. And that's actually a great segue to our next sec section, which is digging into, you know, what, what adver advertisers can really do to kickstart that journey, no matter where they are on the spectrum of adoption. Um, but before we really get into that, would love to hear from the crowd about, you know, based on what we've shared so far, what do you think is the most exciting enhancement uh, that Scan4 brings to the fore? And again, that, that is uh, over to the right-hand side. For anyone who arrived a little bit late, there's a vertical bar chart looking icon uh, that you can hop in there and cast your vote. Let's see. Looks like quite a few people are excited about the multiple postbacks. So That's kind of in the lead right now. Uh, and then a pretty fair split between the rest. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll continue our discussion here. Uh, so let's start with the newbies. For those that are on sort of the beginner end of the scan adoption spectrum, uh, what sort of advice can we give to them? And I'll toss that to you first, Adrian. Yeah, so scan is very complicated. There's a lot going on. So it's really easy to get overwhelmed when you're thinking about all the different factors and the different conversion values and the time delays. So. I think it's really valuable to work with an agency. Um, they are going to be putting all their time and effort into figuring this out, working across multiple different brands, seeing how different brands are approaching the same issue. They can really like guide you through it, simplify the process for you, advise you strategically on how best to set things up. So um, you're not alone. There are resources. There are agencies, MMPs out there that can help you through this process. Um, and I would also recommend just start simple. Um, don't try to test everything at once. Just set up your conversion value. Um, start testing with one or two partners. Um, see how that goes before you start introducing a lot of complexity into it. Great perspective there. What, what do you have to add, Aran? 
Uh, yeah, I think uh, Adrian had really the best advice for uh, uh, beginners for sure. Um, but if I have anything to add, I would say, you know, I get coming from the data side, uh, kind of don't just like give up once you kind of start and see kind of bad performance or anything. There's so much opportunity to optimize there and starts by like looking at the data, like at the actual performance. So start simple, like Adrian uh, said, don't kind of wet in the past and like wet on the sidelines. There is really opportunity there to scale successfully in iOS. It just requires some a bit of a learning curve there, right? So start your campaigns, look at the data, optimize there, iterate through your models, um, and kind of until you get to that point. And yeah, we're always happy, like both the agencies and the MMPs and the and the admin folks out there are happy to help you kind of understand how things look like and help you optimize. Yeah. Yeah, great, great thoughts there. And and just to add to that, you know, lean on the work that others have already done. You know, there's been a path that's been paved. You know, all the folks on the line here have kind of been uh, all in with SCAN since its very earliest days. Uh, and so there's a lot of um, mental equity there built up and take advantage of that. Also, you know, some of your peers, a lot, lot of uh, apps have been testing with SCAN and, you know, leverage those learnings and lean on that. You know, and folks like um, Singular and in Mobi, like we we host workshops to so just educate people, you know, give them 101, 201, 301 type learnings on what they need to know as cans. You don't have to get mired in those hundreds of pages of Apple documentation that are out there. All right, so let's shift gears to the veterans. Um, building on the advice we gave for the newbies, you know, how can we advise those that are already uh, working with scan on adapting to uh, scan four? which I know Singular, you guys recently published a really helpful guide about this exact topic uh, of you know transitioning from three to four. So we'll start with you there, Ron. Uh, yeah, sure, of course. So you know, the first thing to keep in mind is that it's a transition period. There's gonna be like a gradual migration to scan four. It's not just like, yeah, you can just start all your uh, scan four campaigns, that's it. So keep in mind that it's gonna take time. And right now what you can really do is prepare by updating your SDK, as we've mentioned, and kind of uh, planning your course uh, models and kind of uh, being available to start your campaigns with any media networks that uh, support it. Um, so if you try to kind of uh, um, start thinking, okay, how do you plan for it besides like updating your SDK? The first thing that I would recommend is think about the course values of users. Again, it's a new opportunity to think about how do you bucket your users in a more limited fashion, right? To three buckets, low, medium, and high. And I think there are two uh, um, kind of key importance factors there. First of all, is for kind of this, the initial stage of campaigns or really the smaller campaigns who are, weren't able to get to the privacy thresholds of the fine conversion values or the kind of 63 different values. Now you'll be able to get that initial information from the beginning of the campaign based on low, medium, high to understand, roughly speaking, whether your campaign is performing. So there's a key thinking of like, okay, how would you categorize a high value user? Did they make a purchase? Did they make the complete their registration? Uh, did they reach a certain level in your game or kind of I don't know, made an order in your uh, shopping app? So kind of start thinking in those levels and how you would roughly categorize your users. And then kind of the continuation of that is once you have that, have categorization, think about it in different time windows of the users. In many cases, a high value user in the first two days, kind of the first post back in scan four, is different from a high value user after 35 days, might make different actions to kind of uh, signify how well is the campaign kind of driving the performance. So all that you can do right now, as we speak, to plan exactly your models, you can of course work with the MMP to kind of configure these, and reach out to your uh, ad networks, right? Ask who's already available to at least start testing. It's pretty clear that nobody is really ready for production scale at the moment, but you can already test the wires, look at the data, iterate your models while everyone is kind of preparing. So these are kind of highlights. And of course we have like a full guide to kind of talk about the entire transition from scan three to scan four that you can check our website yeah. for. Yeah, yeah, and just to add to that, you know, don't be afraid to bring in your your media partners to those discussions about how to take advantage of some of the features, how to um, you know reimagine your conversion value mapping schemas, um, you know, because you you have to balance the reporting insights you want to get with you know what's really going to drive better uh, campaign performance the fastest. 
and um, optimize my dollars. Uh, and you know, one thing particularly attractive to us is that locking mechanism that would get us that feedback loop closed a lot faster. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll close out this section by tossing it over to you, Adrian, uh, to see what you might have to add. Sure. Um, so I think one thing that you're going to have to think about is uh, the reporting aspect to this. So with Scan3, you're getting just one post back. It's, it's a fine value, so you have a specific uh, result that you're getting. But with Scan4, you're getting coarse values as well. So you might have a combination of both the fine grain and the coarse grain that you're going to have to combine into one report, into uh, some sort of analytics. So it's very important to kind of align your fine grain conversion values with your coarse grain conversion values so that you can combine them. Um, and I think it's very interesting what the MMPs are doing in this space to try to simplify analytics and reporting for their uh, brands and their advertisers that they're working with. I'm seeing a lot of um, interesting modeling going on to try to fill in the gaps from some of those null conversions. Um, and then also kind of utilizing the people that do opt into ATT and um, combining that with the scan data as well. So I think this that space is really developing quite quickly and there's going to be some really interesting things coming out of that. Yep, that, that's a great point, Adrian. You know, taking advantage of all the data that's available to us while we have it. Um, so yeah, so to, to close out this section about what advertisers can do right now to kickstart this process, uh, you know, one of the most pesky features of earlier versions of SCAN is that binary privacy threshold with the pass-fail score. So, you know, thinking about the new privacy tiers that are available to us, what kind of tips uh, does the group have to offer about how you can get the most insights as frequently and as granularly as possible? Um, so I'll, I'll hand it over to you, Adrian, to tackle that one first. Yeah, so with all versions of SCAN, um, you don't want to spread your budget too thin because you do need to reach that privacy threshold in order to get the data back. Um, even with the lower privacy tiers with SCAN 4.0, um, you still want to reach that highest tier and get the most data back possible. So you do want to make sure you have enough budget um, going into the test. Um, you're not fragmenting it too much. Um, really, yeah, start simple, make sure you have a healthy budget and also make sure that you are allocating enough time to your testing with those uh, post back delays that, that Apple is setting. Uh, it can take quite a while for any changes you're making to the campaign to actually come through in the data. So just be patient and you really do have to commit to like a healthy test budget to get the best out of it. Yep, totally agree. Patience is definitely the name of the game with a lot of things to do with scan. Uh, Aran, how about you? Yes, I think uh, one of the things to keep in mind is that uh, the crowd anonymity tiers of the privacy thresholds are based on daily insert volume per scan campaign ID. And uh, uh, that kind of number is based on how the ad network is basically allocating these scan campaign IDs for each campaign. So when you talk about scan campaign ID, it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to look at the number of insults for your run, running campaign in fact, like there's like a very direct ratio, but actually each network might be structuring their campaigns in different ways and basically requiring different tiers. So in many cases, you might've heard about like from when talking with the ad networks or looking at their guidelines that they require a minimal number of installs per day per campaign. And those can change between networks. Each one have like their own strategy. So my best recommendation when trying to fight these thresholds and kind of optimizing is speak with your media partner, understand what are their guidelines, what's the minimal budget, what's the minimal number of insoles that you should aim for to get enough signal. And then kind of on the missing information, like Adrian mentioned, uh, kind of on the censored information, the null conversion values, work with your MMP reports because we're essentially providing a reporting the model conversion values on top so you can see your true performance. So basically we can model based on the uh, IDFA based data and the general user behavior, we can understand, estimate which conversion values were actually hidden from you and what's your true, true performance. So make sure to utilize these tools and talk with your media partners to get the most of these. Yeah, yep, totally agree with you and can say from the, the media partner perspective, you know, we've we've found it at, at Mobi a, a great use case for AI and machine learning, which is why 
you know, we've devoted resources to building, you know, automation for this so that we can rapidly iterate on those campaign IDs and recycle them when we figure out something isn't working. So let's move on to our last section here. So what's next? So before we, we close out here, we'd love to hear from the audience once again, uh, this last poll, basically sentiments of how you're feeling today compared to a year ago when it comes to the outlook of your app growth perspective. So is the future looking brighter? Are you kind of cautiously optimistic based on what you're learning or do you think we're barreling towards the apocalypse? Let's see. Okay, good, we've only got one for the apocalypse so far. Most people are, are cautiously optimistic. Looks like about 85% right now, which that seems fair to me. Okay, so we've learned some things about Scan4 now, um, but what are those questions that, that really remain unanswered at this point? Adrian, what are your thoughts there? I think a big question um, that a lot of people have been wondering is whether Apple will enforce um, their ban on fingerprinting. They've made it quite explicit that it's not, not allowed and actually never allowed. Um, that said, a lot of brands are still using it. Um, so it's not uncommon to be using, you know, probabilistic attribution. But um, I think a reason why Apple has not enforced it yet is because they don't want to really disrupt the industry even more than they already have. They wanted to make Scan a little bit more usable, um, a little bit more advertiser friendly before they start um, kind of punishing or, you know, enforcing their probabilistic ban. So now that they have released Scan 4.0, I definitely see that being more of a possibility and something that definitely could happen um, this year or next year. Yeah, yeah, that question is certainly a top of mind for me as well. Uh, Iran, how about you? Yeah, so uh, yeah, there's definitely uh, many unknowns. You know, we want to kind of see how everything kind of behaves uh, uh, at scale. So uh, like from the tests, uh, we can already see kind of some initial signs of like the new card and anonymity tiers and how they behave compared to the previous privacy thresholds. Um, and, uh, you know, first of all, there are some positive signs. It seems like that Apple didn't uh, make things worse or like increase those tiers to be like above the privacy thresholds that we had before. And that was, um, uh, you know, intuitive maybe, and uh, everyone were hopeful that it would be the case. It would just improve things, but it was good to see that in the actual test. But uh, we'd have to see again at scale, like how things behave. How much time does it really take to kind of get the lower tiers? Like if you look like across the board and uh, whether you really get much more data than you got before. Uh, so I think that's kind of mm -hmm. one interesting bit that's gonna be uh, interesting to see. Uh, the second thing that I'm curious uh, to learn is how uh, how useful would the second and third postbacks be for optimization uh, purposes? Because yes, it's taking a while until you can get these. And there's a lot of random uh, out there that's involved. So it's going to be really mm -hmm. interesting to see whether it can affect kind of performance and suddenly you can actually get that signal. But it's there, it's after a very long time. And, you know, it's pretty hard to understand like, for which user it's actually, it actually belongs to, or which cord it belongs to when there's like so much random involved. Um, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I am curious about the same. And you actually uh, enlightened me on something I hadn't thought of before the other day that, you know, there is the potential where you could get the third post back, but not the second. So I'm very curious about just the frequency with which both the second and the third uh, post back will come through. Uh, and then one other thing that that's kind of top of mind and my curiosity is, you know, how people wind up taking advantage of that that locking mechanism. You know, do they look at it uh, as a point in time? Do they they approach it from specific you know, conversion milestones? So that's definitely something I'll be keeping a close eye on. And then to round things out, what's on our wish list? You know, we, we've seen some nice improvements with Scan4, but we all know there's still uh, room to improve upon that. Um, so let, let's hear from you, Adrian, on what you'd kind of like to see or maybe predictions for what you think we will see in the future with Scan. Yeah, so what I would like to see is some ability to optimize the user experience. Um, so frequency capping, making sure we're not bombarding users with ads over and over again, and also spending um, our media dollars wisely. 
And then also retargeting. Um, it's not something that's really, um, really um, possible with SCAN. Um, you don't know who's been to your app and done certain actions to actually retarget them. Um, and being able to reach people throughout different stages of the funnel, bring them back into your app is a super important strategy. So would love to see that be part of SCAN in the future. All right, let's hear from you, Aran. Yeah, there's probably a pretty long, uh, <laughs> long list of, uh, of items, but uh, you know, just to pick a few, I think I, I agree with Adrian. Like, probably still the biggest uh, gap that exists in Scan is like treating existing users and like uh, retargeting for sure. Like, uh, with the IDFA changes, it's hard to even understand if you're showing the same ad for the same user, right? You may be already having. The, the app installed already. So having a solution there, I think would be really, really meaningful. Um, the other thing is uh, um, MTA, kind of multi-touch support. So they've added some uh, mm -hmm. features for like the winning, law, uh, winning losing postbacks in the past, but uh, it's been, uh, you know, pretty limited, I would say, for kind of for the ad networks and advertisers to use. So I can, I would love to see some more information kind of included there such as like including kind of the, the performance for kind of the assisted kind of uh, clicks and such. I think that would be interesting. Yeah. And then that one is, uh, I think would be very useful for the MMPs and the reporting side is having some some kind of a versioning ID for the encoded kind of post back for models. So a big challenge that mm -hmm. exists there is if you want to change your model today, and again, with all the random, like think about there's like 35 days plus six days of random for when the postback is coming. So if you make a change, now you like literally have to wait like 30 days to know if this postback came from the old version or the new version, which <laughs> definitely complicates things. So if they could like include, you know, some kind of like an identifier or kind of some signal saying if it's the old version, new version without compromising user privacy, I think that would be huge for just, you know, just making sure the operation is smooth and you can feel comfortable making changes in the model. Yep, uh, definitely concur with everything you guys just shared. Uh, and the one one thing I'll add to that is just I'd love to see more industry collaboration. You know, I think uh, a lot of the changes with SCAN kind of get dropped like a bomb without warning. And I, I'd just love to see some kind of cross industry uh, collaboration on how this all unfolds. Uh, so with that, I think that we're at time. Um, I would love to thank Iran and Adrian for you know being generous with their time and their expertise today. Um, did want to mention, if you didn't notice, that there is a link at the bottom of your screen where you can be the first to see a brand new Scan4 readiness checklist that Inmobi just published. Um, and I believe that some resources from all of the panelists are, are pasted into the chat. Um, so definitely take advantage of that. And feel free to reach out to any of us. Like I said we we all need to learn from each other. This stuff isn't easy, and there, there's no shame in uh, leaning on the the school of hard knocks that some of us have gone through. <laughs> so really appreciate it, James. Um, I don't know if you want to come back on and wrap things up, but that wraps things from my end. Well, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Aaron and Adrian. That was great. Uh, we do have a few questions. I think we're you know we're quite close to, to time, but let's let's see how many we can get through. And there are some good ones. So let me uh, push you all back onto the main stage, and let's see how many we get through. Um, I think. And Christine, were you going to drop the links in the? Maybe Tala or Christine mm -hmm. can drop the links to the additional resources in there. Uh, in the in the chat and I'm sure pretty yeah um, okay well let's see how many we get through uh, so Aiden is asking most advertisement platforms such as Google and Facebook are not integrated with SCAD he calls it SCAD 4.0 do you have a rough idea when they're going to come up with a solution Maybe I can uh, volunteer to uh, comment on that. Um, uh, and maybe before I start, I know there's like a bunch of really great questions out there. So even if we won't be able to cover everything, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Right? We can reach out to our LinkedIn, for example, either Sarah, Adrian, or myself, and we're happy to answer anything I have in mind. But then kind of on the question, um, so there are actually, so you're right that Facebook and Google and others aren't like fully integrated uh, with Scan4, but many of these are working as we speak 
on supporting it. I think Inmobi is a great kind of early adopter and already released their scan for support. And Facebook and Google are also working on it. So I can't comment on you know official uh, timelines from Facebook and Google, but I can definitely say that it's in the plans. It's prioritized. We're working on tests as we speak, and uh, you know it's. Uh, I hope that in the next couple of months you'll hear more news from uh, these uh, type of uh, partners. Okay. Um, anyone else want to comment on that? Yeah, I think Facebook in particular, like, has really been affected by the like ATT and the privacy changes. So they're very motivated to uh, get back to the performance that they were seeing before, and you know, bring advertisers back in. So I would expect them to be integrated very soon with Scan4. Sarah, anything you want to add to that? I think they covered off on that pretty well. Okay. Um, yeah, I just all I can say is just anecdotally from the advertisers we work with, you know, they they are saying you know that and Moby's kind of first first in the game here, um, but I would expect others to be fast follows. And uh, Mick has a provocative question here. Uh, he I did did check to see if he was uh, <clears throat> an agent provocateur, but he's a CMO at an app, <laughs> so I think it's a genuine question. He said, does this mean MMPs are dead? That's a great question. I'm happy to uh, take this as an MMP uh, coming from my view, of course. Um, so, you know, it was kind of the same type of questions that we received when SCAN was first announced, actually, kind of the first version out there. I'm saying, wait, if Apple is doing the attribution on the device, so does it mean that the MMP, does it still have value? And, uh, you know, I, I can already see from kind of the experience of like all the versions of SCAN network, and definitely from scan four is that at the end of the day, it's just an API, it's just a tool, but there's so much things that you need to do to really work effectively uh, with it. Think about like building all the conversion schema support, integrating with all the ad networks, collecting all the data together, validating it, providing all the modeling on top. It's like, it's a huge amount of work and it's really, really complicated. Now with scan four, you basically have like three new models. There's course and find, there's source hierarchies, there's crowd anonymity tiers. There's so much work to do. Literally, we have like a company dedicated to it. Then uh, yeah, I feel pretty safe saying that uh, there's still a place for MMPs to provide your know, actionable, accurate, unbiased measurement for advertisers and help uh, ad networks optimize their campaigns. And uh, yeah, I was happy to debate that with uh, anyone who's interested to uh, talk about it. Yeah, I will second that. I definitely recommend working with an MMP. They're just going to do like all the heavy lifting for you, make it so much easier. And I also see a big role of the MMP as being in the um, the media modeling um, and kind of integrating all the different data sources, ATT, scan, null, con values, null conversion values, and uh, visualizing the data in a really uh, digestible way. Yeah. And I, I concur as well. You know, I, I think they're a great sort of unbiased third party. Uh, you know, if we were just leaning on scan or just leaning on, you know, whatever solution Google comes up with, with privacy sandbox, you know, then you get into that grading your own homework situation. So, you know, they both serve as an unbiased uh, third party, but also aggregating, you know, all those different media sources. Okay, hopefully that answers your question, Mick. So, and we have Lynn is saying, since different partners are at different stages of integrating Scan4, will we end up with a mix of Scan3 and Scan4 data? Yeah, I can take that one. You, you definitely will. Um, that's something really important to keep in mind. And, you know, with, and Moby's been developing our solutions for Scan, you know, we make sure it's all backwards compatible, you know, so with players that maybe are just jumping in uh, at Scan4, that, that completely neglects the fact that, you know, there will be other versions in, in the wild and at, you know, a pretty large volume for quite some time, you know, at least through this year, uh, but probably into next year. You know, I think I mentioned earlier, like, you know, we still have 10 to 20 percent that's on different iterations of Scan2. Um, so, yeah, so it's important um, that that backwards compatibility is there so that you can take advantage of as much scale as possible. Okay, and next we have, uh, yeah, Paul wanted to know, Paul Bowen wanted to know, are there any early case studies for Scan4? 
I can try to take that. Uh, and hey, Paul. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, like you've guessed, it's a bit early to like, have like a fully uh, scalable uh, kind of case study for scan for because like the, you know, most of the iOS users haven't even upgraded to R16.1 and above. Um, so there's, we see already kind of, I guess, uh, success cases from like testing and kind of insights coming from that, like seeing kind of the initial data coming from it. And we're speaking about this in, in webinars and talking about the initial insights. But I think we'll probably need like a few more months for like the, read the masculine of the users at least and some of the ad networks uh, through to have like scan for full campaigns to get like meaningful information. So talking about the pra best practices from there. Yep, same here. I mean, I, I can attest that the pipes are working, um, but yeah, it's going to take a few months before, you know, we can really get some meaningful insights on how this changes the game from a performance standpoint, which is, you know, why we're talking to you guys today to, um, you know, help folks along that journey to start, um, you know, rethinking their conversion value mappings and such, you know, to be scanned for ready so that, you know, they can put the foot on the gas when that critical mass is there. Okay, we've got quite a few. I don't think we're ever going to get through all these. We have um, we have pasted in the LinkedIn uh, details in the chat, so that could be a way of, of yeah, as you, as you were saying, Aaron, uh, maybe following up uh, a few of these. But maybe let's let's just see if we can get through a couple more quickly. Uh, do you consider Google device measurement to be fingerprinting? Ask Noah. I don't think so right now because Google is still using their Google ad IDs. So that is deterministic using the device ID um, for Google privacy sandbox, which will come out soon. Um, they're using a different mechanism for attribution. Um, maybe, yeah, if you guys want to know more about the technicalities of that aspect. Yeah, I guess I could, uh, you know, translate that question like in two ways, whether like in Android, you're, they're referring to like whether it, Google uh, talks about like fingerprinting in Android. And I agree with uh, Adrian on this, that I don't think they're referring to this or like commenting on this at any given point in their CGIDs for now. There's the other aspect that might be referred to as whether uh, Google's ad network on iOS, uh, kind of doing things that are considered fingerprinting. And I wouldn't say that's the case either at the moment. So they are using kind of modeling conversions, but not anything that we would assume that anyone considers fingerprinting at this point. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's all uh, up for uh, uh, interpretation, I would say. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't really have any firsthand knowledge to share there, but I, I certainly have heard some hypotheses out there that um, fingerprinting might be in play for that second use case that Iran just mentioned with, you know, the ad network and iOS inventory. But, you know, I will leave it to others that have more firsthand knowledge to, to answer that question more directly. Okay, I think we've got time for one more. There's a couple of draw. If anyone wants to vote on which one they think we should take, wow, there's there's a, a lot of these. Well, look, I think this is going to be great sort of mining actually for uh, to see what what questions you know people actually have at the moment. Um, I guess for we'll we'll take the the top one right now. So last question: What determines what tier you're in for crowd anonymity? Is it based on the advertiser app, or does it relate to the channel? So yeah, maybe I can uh, start there. Uh, so what determines the uh, crawl anonymity tier is the number of daily installs uh, that you have per scan campaign ID. Uh, so uh, it's not unrelated to the app model or the app behavior. It's determined only in the install time. So even before you've opened the app, right? Um, that's what you can determine it is, first of all, your daily budget, like making sure you allocate enough budget to get enough installs per day. And of course, the network strategy and like allocating these budgets for campaigns and like managing it uh, for you. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just um, adding to that, you know, Apple, when they did roll out Scan 4, you know, they they did um, expressly say that, hey, these new four tiers of, of crowd anonymity, they're not going to work just like um, the old binary privacy scoring, which, you know, our research showed that usually it was around 15 installs per day per campaign ID is when you would hit the mark and get over that privacy threshold. Um, but, you know, they did mention in the new documentation for Scan4 that it takes into account, you know, both the traffic to the advertiser's app, the traffic to the publisher's app, 
and then the volume uh, that they see a certain campaign identifiers come through. So early signals show that kind of the top tier and the bottom tier of the new four tiered system pretty closely mirror um, the earlier versions of scan. But, you know, like I said, it's very early. So something I know that we're all watching very closely. Great. Okay. Well, I think we've been going an hour. It's absolutely brilliant discussion. We still got a lot of questions. I think maybe we'll pass them on to the the panelists, and uh, and you know who knows, maybe someone will be able to reach out and get in touch um, on some of these because uh, yeah, there's there's, there's a, a lot of very detailed questions. Um, or maybe we'll do a follow up. I don't know. But um, yeah, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks to Sarah. Yeah. Did a wonderful job moderating. Thanks to our brilliant panelists, Erin and Adrian. And uh, yeah, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, James. Us. Thank you, everyone. Bye.